Hi, this video is about digital oscilloscopes and particularly I am interested in uh, kind of decoding the fancy jargon that comes with it. I've already written an uh, article about this. So um, this is an accompanying video. The idea is to understand what it means when it says 2.5 giga samples per second versus the 300 megahertz bandwidth and 10 bit ADC and all of that stuff. In addition to that, um, is it any better than one of these? For example, this is a, a bit scope analog. Um, uh, some USB based oscilloscope which has a 12 bit ADC but only a 20 mega samples per second uh, refresh rate. So the question is uh, what are all those uh, fancy jargon words that come up uh, with an oscillos digital oscilloscope and how do I capture a particular uh, glitch or a particular signal uh, of interest using one of these instruments. Alright let's take a quick look at uh, the working of a digital storage oscilloscope. Uh, in every kind of oscilloscope, even one of these PC based ones, the first thing you're going to have is an analog front end. What the analog front end is, is basically a um, digitally controlled gain or attenuation stage, which takes your signal and then amplifies or attenuates it and makes it uh, compatible to the range of the analog to digital converter. Now the analog to digital converter is something that keeps converting your analog signal value and converts it into digital bits. Um, it, it's normally an 8-bit. Uh, in the case of this particular, say, uh, Picoscope, it's uh, 12 bits. In the case of a Roden Schwartz, it's 10 bits. So it kind of varies depending upon the manufacturer. And the next thing that happens is it this analog to digital convert, converted values are stored into a memory. Now, uh, the time at which the conversion uh, starts to get stored into the memory is decided by the processor and the trigger settings that you've done. For example, you say 0.4 millivolts and, and at a rising edge. So every time the processor detects that the voltage is going from a lower value to a higher value and it's crossing point volts, 0.4 volts, it starts uh, the it triggers the uh, uh, saving process. Once the processor, uh, so once the memory is full. Uh, then it kind of just crunches the data, converts those binary values uh, into compatible values and then displays it on to your little display. So let's take for example a simple waveform. All right, and I'm going to be doing a capture on this. The first parameter that comes into play is the sampling rate. The sampling rate is associated with your analog to digital conversion and the frequency at which the conversion happens. For example, in a uh, in a continuous analog signal, what we're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having uh, points in between converted into a digital value and stored onto the memory. Now, assuming that this is the point at which the first trigger happens. Then, uh, what? Uh, then once it has, uh, you know, finished off its memory, then it's going to be take. It's going to take some time to process it, and then it's going to wait for the next trigger. So there's going to be a, a finite duration of time between in between triggers. But that really doesn't mean that it's um, even if it has a low trigger uh, speed, it doesn't mean that it's not capturing in between. It's going to have small a small dead time, and then it's going to be capturing in between. This trigger duration is going to be controlled by the memory size. Now, it has two consequences. A, the larger the memory size, the larger the amount of data you're going to be able to store after each trigger, number one. Number two, if you have uh, a larger memory depth, all right, uh, so it's going to affect the processing time because the larger the amount of data you're storing, the more processing you have to do. So it's going to kind of affect uh, your overall performance in one way or the other. Uh, it's going to affect your dead time and that dead time is, is if affects another parameter called refresh rate. So in this case, for example, I've finished my conversion here. There's going to be some processing dead time and then goes on. If I reduce my memory size, my capture size, and this can be done on even on an instrument which has a larger um, memory uh, available. If you do that, then you're going to be taking a small chunk of an entire signal and then you're going to be repeating the process over and over again. So you're basically going to be distributing your dead time across a platform instead of having it there. Um, in uh, Let's take a case of a smaller or slower signal. I have a smaller, a slower signal. If I use the same sampling rate, then I'll run out of memory in a very short, short duration. And this is where the time-based setting kinds of comes in. So that's the horizontal scale settings. Uh, that's uh, the microseconds per division kind of uh, you know uh, scale. So if you change it 
to encompass the entire waveform essentially what's going to happen is your sampling rate is going to drop so once your sampling rate drops you have less number of points to be saved on to the oscilloscope so what that allows you to do is it allows you to capture a larger area but again it's going to be missing out on some parts and that's what this is all about uh the point here is that I want to be able to capture a high frequency glitch. A glitch is an unwanted signal on an un, uh, which is uh, happening over irregular time intervals and I want to be able to capture that signal uh, using an oscilloscope because that's what uh, the scope gives allows me to do. It allows me to visualize a signal and it's a high frequency signal and I want to be able to uh, capture that. Unfortunately most scopes what are going to do is um, if you have a signal going in like this and if you have have lower sampling rates there's a good possibility that the glitch is going to kind of uh, get through the cracks it's going to seep through the cracks and we're not going to be able to see it all right i in order to do this experiment i went ahead and gen created a small glitch generator so what i have is an arduino nano that talks to an ad78 and sorry 9850 dds module which generates a frequency about 10 kilohertz uh, in addition to that, now this is my primary signal. This is what I'm supposed to, you know, kind of observe. And this is what normally happens. You have like a clock signal or some kind of analog signal. And glitches are normally high frequency signals. So I have a 10 kilohertz signal. In addition to that, uh, I have an, uh, an op amp which uh, amplifies it. Uh, so this is in a non-inverting uh, configuration. So it should be minus for R1. I think this should be my gain. All right. So what I'm what I've done is I've added a uh, another transistor, uh, which what it does is uh, on another GPIO I I kind of just uh, pass a small pulse, and what it does is it short circuits this R1 to a very low value on, on the order of very very small. So the gain kind of jumps. Now normally what you would expect is the signal is gonna pop up pop up pop up all the time no actually what's uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna jump the gain so if uh, the input signal my signal here is already at ground level and if I if, even if the gain is like a million zero multiplied by a million is gonna be still zero so the glitch is gonna be consistent it's gonna be a glitch in the amplifier it's the output is gonna be a variable glitch it's not gonna be a peak glitch like uh, I've seen uh, the tectronics uh, sorry the key site scopes have that kind of glitch thing and it, it can be triggered using an edge trigger on it because the gain kind of just jumps up but in this case you're gonna see that the glitch is kind of an amplification glitch and it's really difficult to capture and we're gonna try and capture that so in the setup what I've done is I have uh, my glitch input coming into an oscilloscope and I've used the auxiliary out on that oscilloscope to uh, feed a frequency counter on another oscilloscope so what that what I'm doing essentially is I'm trying to measure uh, what the refresh rate of any scope so what I'm what the um, scope basically does is it sample 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 samples and after that there's some dead time and there's some uh, the frequency kind of just measures the duration between these um, consecutive triggers so if I have a very large memory depth the triggering time is going to be very large even though it's going to capture a long area of these samples but it's going to have like a big uh, gap between it all right I've already got my setup ready so I've got the Arduino uh, sending command I've already set up the commands to the AD9850 and it's generating a sine wave you can see the refresh rate of the trigger uh, signal at 300 Hertz or something so that means it's pretty uh, low so what I want to do is even though it's sampling at 2.5 giga samples per second uh, it's not actually able to see any kind of glitches uh, now the glitch is being introduced after every three seconds uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from sample menu to envelope mode it's going to be like a persistence mode kind of thing uh, in addition to that what I'm gonna, oh there we go there was another glitch but uh, since the glitch is happening every three seconds, I'm not able to see all of the glitches all the time. Uh, well, one of the ways I'm going to do it is I'm going to change this from 2.5 giga samples. I'm going to change the record length down to 10 kilo samples. And already you can see that my uh, refresh rate is somewhere around uh, 650 something hertz. All right. Uh, I'm able to capture some glitches, three seconds and another three seconds 
and another three seconds missed that glitch somewhere no it kind of must have overlapped there we go so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the settings here on the time base and there we go all right so now you can see that my uh sample rate right here is now 1.9 kilohertz all the way from hertz to kilohertz so that's obviously because of the time base setting and it's, it's kind of uh, tweaking your settings between those time bases from 1.9 kilohertz to 1.08 kilohertz but now i'm able to sample those uh, glitches relatively more effectively uh there are going to be glitches in uh, this particular waveform that are not uh gonna be uh detectable if you use triggers for most of these glitches you can detect using setting a trigger at this particular level and then counting those events yeah sure uh, but as you will see uh, a few of these glitches are gonna pop up if those timing glitches appear somewhere in the region between the amplitudes for example if the amplitude of my glitch doesn't even cross that one volt like this one so there's really this is going to be impossible to capture via some specific triggering thing uh so if you can uh, the glitch is going to be high frequency so you're going to have to set the capturing oh there we go there's another glitch so the amplitude is really small but the frequency is really really high and it's part of it's corrupting my signal and this is what i want to capture because i don't really know the shape of my glitch all the time but i do want to know and then is it random or is it happening on a particular uh phase of my signal is it happening at a particular time period so on and so forth so this is part of an analysis I don't think any kind of uh, one single instrument is gonna have an automatic setting for capture the glitch and stuff like that I would love to try this out on a key site uh, and the, you know their high refresh rate kind of scopes and see how uh, dif different it is from this but for me just if you have uh, this uh, Roden Schwartz the RTB 2k is is claimed claiming to have the lowest refresh rate somewhere around 50,000 waveforms per second uh, that's like 50k but as far as I'm concerned uh, if I can set it up set up the triggers correctly I can capture about anything on one of these uh, even if it's a lower refresh rate and for the price point of one of these scopes like this is fantastic value but that's not the point the point is there is no replacement for human ingenuity so uh, there's not gonna be an automatic uh, if you're an idiot press this button kind of a setting so uh, if I change the time base here the number of glitches appearing there we go glitch after every three seconds it missed a glitch and it's not necessary that it actually missed a glitch because if it's again I told you if the glitch appears kind of here and zero multiplied by the gain of uh, you know zero uh, any kind of voltage is gonna be zero so so you, there are glitches appearing here and there and so, so on and so forth so really it's about uh, the right settings and this is a good example if you want to replicate this project I'm gonna leave the schematic and the Arduino code uh, on github somewhere I'm gonna link it at the in the description of this video so that's about it uh, you can I would really appreciate if somebody would actually change the settings on this and mess around with this and if you have a key site scope really test out the same project and check out how many glitches you can capture there and so on and so forth uh, and see if it really makes a difference for me kind of it it's uh, this is the way I do stuff so there's a very small glitch there uh, there's really really I don't think there's going to be any kind of automatic test equipment that's going to say oh I'm going to measure I'm going to just able to capture this kind of glitch uh, so um, because the the glitch kind of just it's not consistent you know it's not just one kind of glitch so this is the kind of uh, instrumentation analysis that has to be done using human ingenuity in the next video I'm going to take a look at more of the features of the uh scope of this rtb in particular because it has a lot of cool features that kind of allow you you can create a um you know use the mask feature here and then it can allow you to uh, you know uh, count events if it exceeds a mask like for so that's a part of a different video altogether and then you can count those total events and so on and so forth but i uh, really um if there's something specific you would like me to try out please leave me a comment and uh, i'll see you in the next video